to make sure you see that as well. Hello and welcome into this week's edition of AFMC TV. We're so glad you're joining us today. Joining in the studio is our outgoing and incoming CEOs of AFMC. Of course, Ray Hanley, who's been a friend of the show from the get-go. And now Mr. John Selig, who will be um, assuming the reins uh, later uh, next month, as right. a matter of fact. And so wanted to just take an opportunity to have both of you gentlemen in to just just talk, uh, you know, Ray. You you've had a long tenure here, and of course, yes, I have a dozen years. A dozen years, and we've loved having you on the show multiple times throughout the show's first year, and um, so maybe just to kind of level set, maybe we start just with healthcare in general. Um, not that there have been any dramatic changes in healthcare over the last two <laughs> years, right? right? So what? Um, I'm curious to your point of view on the status of healthcare now as we are moving forward. We we are making strides coming out of the pandemic. Um, what what does healthcare look like? Because I'm pretty sure it doesn't look like how it did in 2019, yeah. like how it looks now in in 2022. So Ray, I'll start with you. What what do you think? You know, I think uh, we learned a lot. I think we have a lot deeper appreciation for uh, public health and the role they play and uh, hopefully for uh, the, the role that partners like AFMC play. <laughs> we were out there every day vaccinating, testing, um, trying to do our part. Uh, I think we learned a lot about vaccines and hopefully a lot better appreciation for the good that vaccines do and that we're better prepared for the next uh, pandemic. I think we learned a lot about telemedicine. I think that's probably the most lasting uh, thing that's come out of this, particularly in a rural state like Arkansas, where telemedicine can, can really make a difference. Yeah. Uh, the use of it jumped way, way up. Mm -hmm. uh, the providers and the patients uh, learned a lot about it and how it works and value it. And again, that's, that's probably the biggest single uh, legacy going forward. Mm -hmm. And John, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I certainly agree with Ray. I think, you know, a lot of people, if they knew what public health was, they probably thought it was clean air, clean water, mm -hmm. you know, come and get your vaccinations. Um, and now they realize it's much more. Um, I think there is, I mean, in some cases for better or worse, I think because there were kind of mixed messages, I think part of what public health's job now is now that it's kind of front and center is for people to really understand and build that trust that I think for so long the public health officials have had. It's just kind of the smart, thoughtful, trying to protect the public health. And I think that got a little muddied at times, mm, um, sure. but hopefully we'll get back to that because I think public health plays a critical role. I certainly agree with telehealth. It has changed the way we do medicine, particularly for rural areas. I think people can get much better care. I guess the other two things that occur to me are, one, I think there's a much heightened awareness of mental health issues, both because of the stress mm -hmm. with the pandemic, but also mm -hmm. in particular around kids school age kids and the need for services for them. Um, and then I think, at least in the short term, I mean, the, the healthcare system has really been, I mean, people value what healthcare workers have done um, and saw how hard they worked, but it also created a lot of burnout. And so I think the system is now trying to recover. I'm on the board of a local hospital and just trying to find the staff uh, is a challenge. And it's not the kind of thing, I mean, once nurses leave the field, for example, and decide to do something else, you can't just go get a bunch of new nurses because the, the nursing schools only have so much capacity. Medical schools only have so much capacity. So it's gonna take some time, I think, to rebuild that workforce. Uh, but I think people sure realize how, how important it is. I wanna I want to touch on that briefly because as you mentioned, as nurses are retiring or just leaving because you know what, I'm fed up right. and I'm, and I'm finished. Right. Um, what does that do for recruitment in terms of students who are going into college? Are they looking at the medical profession thinking, yes, that is what I wanna do and I wanna make that difference? Or is there a shift and, and more of them are thinking, uh, that's a little more than what I think I'm bargaining for. I, I mean, I think the demand is there. I think there are, certainly not everyone, but I think there are a lot of young people who see what happened during the pandemic and saw what a critical role the nurses and doctors and others techs played 
and say, I want to get into that field. It's just yeah. going to take a while to get there. To get them there. Sure, uh, but I don't think there's a lack of demand for the slots, for example, in nursing school. Good. No. Good. And certainly the salaries uh, were bid up quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. during they COVID. Yeah. Uh, and just simply from an income potential yep. uh, career, uh, it, it is uh, more attractive than it was two years ago. That's true. And I think that's a factor too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one one more um, topic I want to touch on, at least where the, the the pandemic is is concerned. We've talked we've talked extensively about lessons learned and whatnot, um, but we will deal with some of the ramifications, such as mental health in young mm. students, for a while. Um, are there any surprises that may be coming down the line that we're not ready yet, or that we don't we're not anticipating? yet, um, whether that is further delayed learning or, or a larger mental health crisis or impact than what we could have ever imagined. Um, so, so pull out your crystal balls, gentlemen, and look into well, the I future. Think if you look uh, at how test scores are lagging in this state and how poorly uh, Arkansas students compare to, to many other states and much of the world, uh, I think part of that is uh, the drag over the last two years. Yeah. A lot of time missed in the classroom. Uh, a lot of uh, homeschooling that worked for some and not for others. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of loss of uh, social activities and sure. time with peers. And uh, I think uh, we won't know for a while, but uh, I think that certainly uh, has uh, some uh, ramifications mm -hmm. to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I think you saw, I mean, all the studies show that it was particularly difficult for low income families, for families where, you know, if mom or dad couldn't stay home and help with the homeschooling and the kids were kind of just on their own, it was much more difficult if you don't have access to the internet or if your internet isn't very good. Mm -hmm. um, kids, that there was that, that divide grew. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think that's why you see so much attention now to um, really getting broadband out in the state, which I think this state is doing a good job mm -hmm. focusing on that. I think that's going to be critical, but I think as Ray says, this is the type of thing I think you you can see there's been a uh, adverse impact now. It's hard to know three or five or 10 years down the road whether that impact is going to last or whether those kids will catch back up. Well, I certainly hope they do. Sure, sure. And we take for granted, even just living in Little Rock, the, the Wi-Fi, the high speed, sure. knowing that in other places of the state, it just simply does not even exist. Yep. And so, yeah, definitely yes. some, some barriers to overcome. Okay, we're going to make a hard left turn. And Ray, I'm most interested in one of your favorite memories here from AFMC. You know, I've thought about that. Uh, it is it is really a collage of things. Uh, you know, I, I think about all the the meetings around the the table with the super smart, talented, committed staff, that, the leaders that we have built, um, all their ideas and hard work, and how that's led we virtually tripled the size of this company over the last twelve years. Um, and it's not just about the, the revenue and the, uh, the number of staff, but, but it's about what this effort by this team did uh, to improve health care. Uh, when we were out there day to day running clinics, uh, working the phones for thousands of people that needed help. We're out there now, for instance, uh, standing up uh, health clinics in the historical black colleges in the state. Uh, it, it has been about uh, so many opportunities that the team has created to make a difference and carry out the mission of improving health care. And I am just so, so proud of what we have collectively done. Yep, definitely. John, I'll turn to you. What a legacy you are inheriting. Right. <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> so um, what are just high level, just some hopes and dreams that you have? Yeah, you know, as Ray said, I mean, they have had such an impact. There's been growth, but as he said, in my mind, the growth is not as important as the impact on the health system. Right. And particularly at a critical time of need, the support of the Medicaid program, the support of public health programs, historic black colleges, there's just, 
there's so many opportunities, uh, but you've got to go after them, and they have done that. Ray and the team have. So, I mean, I feel so fortunate to come in with such a strong team. I mean, Ray just left it in a great place. I guess, you know, certainly not a situation where there's no place to go but up because it's, it's already <laughs> been up. Um, but there, there are just lots of opportunities, and um, I really look forward to saying, okay, given all the strengths that we have and what FMC has shown in the last few years, what do we now do to even have a bigger impact? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, in particular in Arkansas, I mean, there are, FMC does work in other states, which is great, kind of the diversification. But I think the focus is still in Arkansas and improving the healthcare system here. Definitely, definitely. Ray, any advice that you would impart? Uh, I think uh, listen to your, your team, uh, learn from them uh, while you're leading them, and uh, which has sort of been my mantra. Uh, I've led them, but I've also learned a great deal just by uh, listening to the team around the table. Well, in the two short years that I've been here, I, you've done an, an excellent job of, of both listening and leading and steering this ship through a pandemic for crying out loud. <laughs> These have not been the, the two most easiest years in any of our lives. And so um, it's, it's been a true honor. Thank you. Honor and, and pleasure. Uh, you have certainly done your, your part, uh, Yeoman's work. And well, thank I'm you. Really, really proud of what you've done. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, anything else that you would like to add in our remaining moments? I don't think so. Happy to be here and I just I'm and, so proud of the work that Ray has done. And I am uh, <clears throat> pleased to be able to pass the baton to John. We have been uh, friends and colleagues for the better part of 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked together last. And, 2013 to, okay. to pass uh, Medicaid expansion. John from the DHS side and myself from the private side, leading a coalition of 35 groups that lobbied uh, day in and day out at the Capitol. Uh, and I'm just uh, looking forward to, to John's leadership and staying in touch with folks and uh, see how I uh, expect that uh, good things are gonna happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you both for taking time out today to be on the show. Sure. Thank you for having us. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here next week for more AFMC TV.